start by telling us what's driving these layoffs? Sure. Um, St. Norbert College is not immune from a number of the changes that are taking place in higher education across the country. Since 2008, families had fewer children, and so that means demographically uh, we have fewer 18 to 22-year-olds. And so um, with fewer students, of course, organizations, you know, adjust all that with that. And so that's what we're doing. And how did you come up with the number of people to, to let you know where those factors come in? Um, so we just looked across the institution, and obviously our prime consideration is to make sure that we can still deliver on the promise of a really solid education um, and try not to impact the core educational mission of the institution. So about two dozen of our valued colleagues were impacted this week, and about a dozen more will be impacted over the next year. What kind of positions are these? Mostly staff positions, so positions um, in areas where we might be able to streamline, restructure to gain some efficiencies. As a Catholic Norbertine institution, our number one priority is to make sure that this education is accessible and affordable to our students and families. And so what that means in this economy is really working hard to try to figure out how we can deliver on that same quality educational experience, but in the most efficient and effective way possible. So is this a layoff situation, or are these people permanently let go? These, pe these positions have been eliminated, yes, okay. yes. Is this an example of what's happening in a bigger picture across the country? You are not the first university or college locally to be going through this. Um, how do you, I got, you can answer that, but also, yeah. you, know, you know, how do you meet that head on? Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is definitely something that's facing colleges and universities across the country. When I chose to come to St. Norbert College, a couple of things that drove that decision was educational quality. It was clear this institution was doing really amazing things with students. In fact, we just broke into the top 100 national liberal arts institutions. The second thing is I looked at the talent here. We have an extraordinary faculty and staff. And the third thing was it's solid financially. So again, it's really important for people to understand that you can be fundamentally solid both educationally and financially, but as demographics um, produce fewer 18 to 22 year olds, you have to sometimes adjust the size of your organization. And that's what we've done. And what does this mean to the college now? Because I know that you came in July. Yes. So have you seen layoffs like this in your previous positions? And, you know, I mean, 41, five even, is kind of, yeah. I would go, wow, but 41's a lot. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that number might sound like a lot, but you have to remember we have more than 500 faculty and staff members. So in the large of scheme of scheme of things, um, you know, it's less than 5% of the labor force. Yes, I have experienced this before. In fact, I think probably at every prior institution, this is my fifth institution. So these sorts of things are not new to higher education, and especially I would say over the, the past five to 10 years, um, it's been getting tougher, and more competitive. Smaller, um, colleges, you think, experiencing it more than, you know, bigger colleges? I think it's across the board. I just think sometimes um, when it happens at smaller colleges, it draws more attention. But I think this is really a challenge across higher education. And why, why do you think it's been such a challenge? I, I think demographically, uh, it's a challenge. I also think more and more people are starting to question the value of higher education. So it's really important, it's incumbent upon us to be more clear about the true measure of our success. What I say at St. Norbert College is the true measure of our success is reflected in the lives and the successes of our graduates. And you can look anywhere in any corner of this community and see St. Norbert College graduates doing amazing things. Could more positions be eliminated? You know, it's, I don't really want to speculate on that. Um, so much depends on our efforts right now. We're super excited because we're launching new academic programs. We're launching things in our co-curricular programming, et cetera. Um, lots of new revenue generating ideas, new partnerships with external organizations. All of those things can help us both contain costs and generate revenue. 
And so I have absolute confidence in this community really rallying um, to do that. So we hope not, but I wouldn't want to speculate, you know, into the future. You're kind in a position, and I mean, was the college pretty much, were they transparent about this with you? Um, so, you know, I don't want to speculate about what people know or don't know or whatever. What I can tell you is that as soon as I got here in the first two weeks, I was exceedingly, I, I say radically transparent with the community in taking out um, a, a dashboard of 10 years of actual performance of the college and then projecting forward using realistic assumptions what we might expect to see over the next three years. And that's how we're proceeding together as a community. With less okay. students coming in yeah. and revenues going up, do you anticipate tuition increases somewhere along the way? We're really committed to try to hold our t tuition flat. Um, I think that's really important to our mission. You know, we're all about accessibility, affordability, and accountability for excellent results. So while we probably will see some increase just because of inflationary pressures, my commitment to our students and families is to try to keep this tuition as flat as possible. And when was the last time you raised tuition? Uh, I believe it was last year, but I don't know the percentages. Yeah. And then is the primary driver, you say demographics, right? So you're anticipating a drop in enrollment because your college is maintained around between 1,900 and 2,300 students over the last decade. So. Yeah. We, we do anticipate a little bit of a decline just because of the areas that we draw from. But again, new academic programs, new co-curricular programs, we think is going to help um, prevent any substantive losses over time. And then are you projecting any budget deficit for fiscal year 2024? Um, we uh, will have a balanced budget in fiscal year 2024. By making these projections yeah, That's exactly right. That's exactly right. We are really committed. This college, uh, again, is amazingly strong from a balance sheet perspective. This was an annual operating, um, operating budget challenge, and I'm really proud of the way our team came together to address it. Again, always with our students and our families at the center of every decision that we make. What do you want to say to students and families as a result of them hearing about this and wondering what that means for their children's education? I want to tell them that this education is rock solid and that these, um, these eliminations, while painful because there are valued colleagues that we care about deeply and that we continue to walk with, will have zero impact on the quality of education or care that their students are provided. Are you assisting in any way with their departure? We are indeed. Um, we're very blessed to be us on solid financial footing and to be able to help people as we move forward. Do you I know the little range bit. of the people who are leaving? Is it a couple years, 10 years here? Do you have any idea? Uh, I, I do not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're all over, but I don't can't tell you right off the top of my head. When it came to the decision making with who to cut, was it uh, the numbers of enrollment in their classes? Was it the curriculum themselves? What led to the decision? So um, the guiding principles always we start with mission, right, and make sure that we try not to negatively impact mission or educational quality. Um, there are very few faculty members in, involved because we would have to provide timely notification. Um, so very few faculty are involved. So that's why I say students should really not notice um, very much difference at all. With the, the 41 people who have been cut, and sort of, and then those who were cut recently versus it's going to take a, a year, um, what led to which classes, which faculty members, that decision? Oh, I think mission. I also think the area of the program, whether there is significant demand or not. Obviously, if there's a lot of demand, we probably wouldn't cut in that area. Um, but I accepted the recommendations of vice presidents who are much closer, closer to the data. Do you know which areas of study are seeing more of these cuts proportionally? Um, I think there are too few to even make a comment about that. I mean, again, the number of faculty impacted are very minimal. Yes, 41 out of 500 is minimal. I was no, 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 no. That's completely, yeah. your numbers are way I off. I give you more information. I thought yeah. that's what you had said. No, 20 that I have an immediate impact for staff. Mm -hmm. Of the 12, seven were faculty, and of those seven, three were visiting professors who contacted me. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah.
And then have you considered making reductions in other areas or are there cuts across like other, not necessarily personnel, but other types of budgetary? Oh, sure. Um, this involves both personnel and non-personnel um, aspects of the budget. Do you have any like examples of like non-personnel areas like oh. from different types of supplies or things like that? Yeah, so I think um, we did a number of things in the area of energy conservation. I think we've done certain things with buildings across campus, um, probably renegotiated contracts across the institution. I don't have specifics, but those are the types of things. Absolutely. Tell us about the, um, uh, the staff members who aren't faculty. Like, what kinds of roles they went to? Who did you know get that? Well, it's a range of roles. I mean, we might be able to give you some particular examples, but um, a number of them are more not student-facing types of roles. Although some of them, I'm sure, were, um, but I can't give you exact titles. Yeah. What was what were those um, conversations like with the So I was not involved in those conversations. What I can tell you, um, my direction was, is that we should treat every single person as though they were our family member, because that's who we are as a Catholic Norbertine institution. We believe in this notion of cura personalis, which is care of the whole person. That's the way we approach every single student on this campus, and that's the way we approach our colleagues. So while I wasn't in on each of those conversations, that was the guiding principle. And the guiding principle remains that we will accompany our faculty and staff impacted as we work through this transition with them. And then you said that you're financially able to help them out through the part, do you mean that you were able to offer them severance? That's so. right. Have you heard any reactions from the students that are currently on staff, or not on staff, but generally? Yeah, so I just had lunch with a group of students, and you know, when you're able to sit down and explain the situation, and I usually try to explain it um, in terms of their own family situation, they, they're they incredibly understanding. I mean, obviously they have concerns, they worry about people because that's who we are as a community, um, but once I walk through it with them, they were, to a person, they've all been incredibly understanding. And they also understand that our responsibility as the leaders of this institution is to be good stewards of their tuition dollars and to be good stewards of our donor investment dollars. And so, again, just managing those internal resources effectively is what we're called to do. I'm going to have to bounce, yeah. so I'm just going to yeah, wrap up sure. and you guys can continue. Sure. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Oh, sure. Kind of like give them sure. So we're immediately launching two separate groups. Um, one group is going to be to develop an academic affairs strategic agenda. So to really start thinking about how do we best meet the needs of students coming in now, moving forward, where, you know, their interests are always changing. So how do we make sure that we really are on the cutting edge of offering academic programs that students really want? And we're also putting together a task force on revenue generation so that everyone in the community can come together and bring ideas to the table that can then be vetted um, as we make decisions about, you know, how do we diversify our programs, diversify our markets, et cetera. Thank you. Is there anything else you really want to add? Anything else important? Um, I guess what I would just say is that St. Norbert College is about ready to celebrate its 125th uh, anniversary since its founding, so we're very excited about that. And, you know, resilience is really built into this institution's DNA. We're part of a 900-year Norbertine tradition. And so although these moments in our long history are always tough, right, because we have lost valued colleagues, um, 
this institution is fundamentally strong and will continue delivering on the promise of that Catholic Norbertine education um, for the next 125 years. Has, um, has the three kind of um, shifted your perspective at all on kind of your outlook of higher education? Not at all. I've been at five institutions. I chose to come to St. Norbert College because it's strong on mission. Its education is second to none, um, and it's more financially solid than many, many other institutions. So, you know, universities and colleges are made up largely of two things, talent and culture, and this place has both of those in abundance. So I have absolute confidence in the success of our community and our community coming together and getting through this challenging week and continuing to do remarkable things for our students, our families, and our community. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.